looking good. All right, let's see what you got. I don't exactly remember your MMR range, or those are your teammates. I think that's not in rank game, maybe with with the party. So I'm just gonna go with tips in general, how to approach the mid lane this meta. And the first thing I'm gonna mention is you might wanna now. use your ward as early as possible, we may never so you can be match like this. just in time. So we can place a reward around here, so we can, can have ruin vision maybe, enemy vision, and be in time for the blocking. Because blocking is super important. At every, every meta, not, not just at this meta. If one mid player is, is successful with a block and the other is not, it can not only provide a huge advantage, it might even result in a one lane even in an unfamiliar conditions for the lane. So yeah, always place the rewards as soon as possible. It also decreases the chances of the enemy rewarding it. Uh, you as a mid laner taking a rune is never as important as getting a good block. Let your, let your team get it. If you don't get it, that's fine. Because you will always get more gold from a favorable block position than you would get from one extra rune. And experience, of course. At the end of the day, the block uh, turned out fine. And if you're talking about blocks, I can, I can also mention that there are a few cases where blocking isn't as important and you can actually do go for the rune. This might be one of those cases, because if you're against melee hero, you already have an innate advantage. So blocking might not be as beneficial as it would be. But in 99% cases, even against melee heroes, I would still say blocking is king. But yeah, in this case, the waves did end up in, I would say, your favor. So let's talk about the optimal way to play the first wave. What you do to your opponent doesn't matter. Your goal is to get level 2 first. And then, as a secondary goal, or primary goal, I think they're both pretty important. So yeah, two goals. One is... I forgot what I said about one, but the two, second second one is to make sure the wave is pushing into enemy tower as soon as possible. This gets to level 2, I think that was the first point, yeah. Harassing the opponent at this stage is definitely not the first priority. Because as you can see, what happens is that with you naturally right-clicking the enemy hero, the creeps will follow you, you will try to drop the aggro, and... In, unintentionally, I believe, you will make those creeps get under your tower range, which will make it harder for you to last hit, forcing you to use mana for it. It's always best to use your mana to nuke down the ranged creep ASAP, bonus points if you can get a melee creep with it as well. But if you have to stay in, the, in your tower range, making sure this creep dies, then you're potentially losing some last hits on the range creep. And that's the most important creep in the lane, especially mid lane. So yeah, w with the first few seconds in this lane, what's happening is simply pure uncontrolled chaos. Like you, you sink in a few hits into the enemy mid laner, right? Let's watch again. And then the wave just goes wild. Yes, you did deal some damage. But now it is way harder for you to have a controlled environment where you can last it safely. And as a result, you get pretty much nothing out of it from the first wave. Alternatively, the right way to have played this lane is, right at this moment, what you do, you forget about the enemy middle, uh, about the enemy hero. You hit the range creep, once, twice, three times maybe, 
in the process you can aggro the hero so whichever melee creep is being beaten on will follow you you bring it into the range of the ranged creep you you place a remnant and remnant takes down two creeps uncontested and then you can use one maybe two remnants to get the other two creeps and in the end what happens is yes you will take some damage Yes, enemy will take less damage than he would if you would have right clicked him. But you get four less hits. Maybe two, maybe three. Optimally four. You get level two first, and the enemy no longer is no longer in position to right click you, because the entire creep wave of yours is pushing into him. So what I'm saying is the first wave is the most important. And how to make it most successful is number one, blocking, and number two, pushing it out as soon as you can, instead of focusing on the enemy. And this is true against most of the engagements. Like versus Void here, this is correct. Versus Queen of Pain, this would be correct. I think quite literally versus any hero. If you're if you if you're gonna push in, that would be the right play. Hellscar, same. And what you want to avoid is this uncontrolled chaos, where as soon as you right-click, the creep positioning goes haywire and makes it impossible for you to do your job getting golden experience from it. One way to stylish the situation, or just to be, be aware of this in general, is that as soon as you trade hits, the creeps will switch aggro like look at the screen right now what's happening those two of your smelly creeps they will move into the rage creep and start pummeling it because boy this out of range for them so as soon as soon as you notice this happening you can assume that enemy melee creep is in danger of taking damage and being denied and how you can sal salvage this situation is by moving with those melee creeps and start hitting the range creep with them, and then at an appropriate moment, dropping a remnant. This will make it easy. This will make it uh, like a hundred percent chance to get a last hit, and then it's easier for you to get the rest of the three. And yeah, most of the time, if you do do all of this correctly, it can make or break your lane. If the enemy doesn't know how to do it correctly, if he doesn't understand the importance of it, then you will automatically win your lane most matchups. Let's see how the rest of it goes. Since you're going for a bottle, it makes perfect sense to use your mana more this to secure those last hits. Mine. Not only will you not get denied, you will also speed run your bottle. So any mana you spend, you will recover very soon. Ideally, if you're going for a bottle, you should aim so that you have it by minute two. The way things are looking right now, it is impossible for you to get a minute two bottle. Why do you want a minute two bottle? Because then we can, as soon as the ball arrives, we can use it, and then immediately the runes will spawn. How to make sure you get level two uh, bottle by minute two? You buy le a little bit less starting items. So, if you're the kind of player that goes bottle, well, for example, I don't go bottle anymore. But if you go bottle, then what you want to do is make is have two branches. Mantle of Intelligence, Circlet, Tango, probably a Fairy Fire, and that will leave you about with about 200 gold extra for your bottle. Then add the runes if they're, if your team takes two runes, that's 300 gold. And if you have if you would have applied what I said about the first wave successfully, that's still like two, maybe three, maybe four last hits. And either by the first wave or by the second wave, depending on your success on the runes, 
you will have your bottle. And then you use it, and then you immediately refresh it with the runes. If you go now, and you don't have perfect success with your last hits, your bottle will, go, will be late. If the enemy is also a bottle user, and he adjusts his starting items to something of what I said, he will have battle early, he will have more region, he will win the lane by default, because he out-trades you with his more region. So yeah, another very important aspect. From what, from what I'm, what I'm seeing is like 90% of your laning is spent trying to right click the enemy hero. And that should not be your primary goal. Your primary goal is ensuring the last hits are coming smoothly. And then any extra second that you're not manipulating the creep wave or last hitting. Then you sink those right clicks into enemy hero. I suppose this applies a little bit, what you're doing applies a little bit more to White Spirit because of how easily he takes hits because he's a melee hero. But against anyone else like a Huskar, Skyrock Mage, Luna, Queen of Pain, if you spend all this time trading with them and they naturally trade better than you, that's just an automatically lost lane. So to summarize my last few sentences, try to focus way more on less hits and way less on the right clicks. Harassing right clicks are the secondary objective. One little nuanced thing is that if you would pause this moment and ask yourself if you follow this hero, what are you gaining from this action? Can you kill him under tower? That's a no. Can you deny his creep? Maybe. Maybe two times. But let me post an, an alternative. What if what if he notices your aggression and simply places a remnant on your way back? This not only ensures that you're tanking tower hits, you will take his hits, you will take creep hits. That's a lot of damage, that's potentially lane lost just from this maneuver. And if you look back, and compare possible outcomes from this uh, from this move from this movement. What you gain is at most very questionable two denies. You're not gonna get a lot of harassment in, and potentially you're losing your lane if you're getting baited to a spell. I'm pretty sure it's not very clear at the heat of the moment what you're doing is wrong or right, but if you would watch your replays in the and re try to reflect on it. You would kind of see yourself that this move offers very little reward for the risks. Instead, what I would say you should do is, as soon as you notice that there is no good options to play here, you move back and start blocking. This way not only are you no longer in the risk, you will also place the next wave at your high ground and have advantage. Because the way I see you, this First is... Blood. A better player would have definitely punished you for this move. And now the same example as I said like 5 minutes earlier, is that as soon as you notice your melee creeps moving towards a direction of the range creep, you should move as well. You know that Void Spirit has used his remnant. 
he cannot prevent you from moving. And in that case, what you want to do is move up to the range creep, press Q, maybe probably hit the void as well, if not with the remnant, then with the right click, and you have you will have secured the range creep. As a bonus, if you move out, his melee creep will hit your range creep. And maybe probably not only will you last hit the range creep, you will deny yours as well. Because by the time you get back, he would be at half health. There's a lot of those uh, minor nuances you, you, you might see, you might not see, but you gotta look for them and you, might, you need to train yourself to recognize and act on it. Another very big mistake is if you're landing against a hero who can be easily vortexed, like a void spirit because he's melee, take it as soon as possible. Because a successful vortex combo deals around 300 damage. And the way this void has been playing is he's been like you kind of very reckless and I believe with the vortex there were a few moments where we could have killed him even against range heroes you, st you still want to take vortex because there will be moments there will be moments that you might not recognize those moments just yet but when you do recognize you would deal significant damage to the, to the enemy mid should look to their middle tower. Again, there is no reason for you to be in the high ground, just go back and block the wave. You're not gaining anything. Again, the Vortex, and he... he might die. Okay, let's see, let's see. I think that's very good. I'll take your tribute. One thing I can say for sure is that in the future if you get a matchup like this and you take into account what I said about the first wave, you would be at an XP advantage. And at this moment you would be level 6 and he would be level 5 because you played the lane better. And you could dive and you could get a kill. That's how important the first wave is. But yeah, if he reaches 6 and you reach 6, that, that's, then that's a stalemate. Without a, a gank or a significant misplay, none, none of you have a chance of killing each other. Under normal circumstances. Skip forward is something important. You notice what spirit is missing, so we're pushing, that's really good, because we have a catapult with you. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. You're refreshing vision so you can have roots, that's really good. Although what you might want to do is, is uh, since you had a lot of creeps, you might have wanted to fortify them. And since Void is still not here, you, you're free to clear his creeps while yours are fortified and as a result he has no creeps and you have like a five creeps plus catapult plus your illusions plus you hitting tower it is entirely possible for you to clear to actually knock down his tower at this moment which is still happening okay. uh, what I'm saying is that with what I said previously, there would be way less, less time for the enemy to react. And the longer this goes on, the more chance that someone rotates, like a support maybe. And any rotation will disrupt the tower knockdown process. So if you notice, if you notice a moment where you can significantly increase the chances of the tower falling, you should act on it ASAP. Dyer's 
Shadow's middle tower is under attack. There is little hope for dying. Fortification is a powerful tool. There is little hope for Dyer's middle tower. Dyer's middle tower is no more. Killing spree! Alright, tower is down, now what? Now we're gonna... Radiation now we have two options, either uh, speedrun the jungle, since it's very safe, or help the side lanes. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Killing spree. Now I want you to actually carefully consider of where you want to be. Like right now, your camera is positioned top, and what you see are three heroes having a really good chance of actually killing TA without any additional help. And if that happens, the tower will take significant damage, with or without you. So the way I see it, as soon as you see this picture, with this information present on the screen, you deduce that going top is a waste of your time. Because you, you, you being there does not give your team an advantage, which they didn't have before. All you're doing is wasting all of your mana for a thing that would happen anyway. So basically, this is griefing, to put it lightly. You're putting yourself out of the game for a kill, which would have happened. And now, if your team would respond to the bottom, gang and they would fight here and they would be so oh so close to winning that they would need just one teleport to turn the tide but you cannot do it because you have no mana and so your team could ca either cannot teleport or would teleport and lose so the right the right play would be Right at this moment, once a tower is down, you look around the map and you ask yourself where where should I be for the most benefit? And now we have two options. If we rule out top, we have two options. Option one is jungle. As a mid laner, jungle is always good because it's it's all around the runes, it's fast, it's a free battle refresh. Top is a no no. But if you look at the bottom, what do we see? Three heroes just ganked Juggernaut. And very likely they have used everything to get that kill. If you were to teleport bottom or walk there, it is unlikely that they would kill you. They might attempt a kill, but you would have full mana, full health, and you could actually bait someone to diving and get them yourself or have a support rotating. Which is, compared to the top play, I would say way beneficial, way more beneficial. And as a bonus, since Jagger died there against three heroes and the mid lane is currently free, what happens is that during the 20 seconds of Jagger's downtime, you go bottom, you take the bottom lane. You take more dangerous farm because you can. You're full health, you're full mana, and you will not die to them. And as a bonus point, Jagger then can go to middle with no tower since it's very safe for him to farm. You're essentially trading places. I mean yes, Jagger could still go bottom, you could still stay, stay in the middle, but during those 20 seconds that Jagger is dead and, and you would tell him to go bottom, what's happening is your tower is dying. Right now you have a free moment to save your tower by teleporting bottom. Just as soon as you teleport, they will scatter. They will run away because they're low. They don't have cooldowns. Those creeps, they will die. Tower will be safe. Jugger will go either here or middle. Preferably middle. And just like that, 
we have found the most optimal play on the map right now. Let's continue. And look how low you're staying. That's that's an easy kill. That would kill you. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is in danger. Dyer should look to their top tower. Radiance courier has been killed. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance structures are fortified. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. One more note is that you should always align your movements to be in the mid lane by the time the rune spawns. Because as I see it right now, you have very little mana, you will need to use the bottle to refill your mana, and ideally you want to refresh your bottle with a rune. But since you're still here, and it's the rune spawn time, you are giving the rune freely to Void while you are ahead of him and he wouldn't be able to contest you on the rune. So not only do not get a refill, you're also giving Void a free rune which, with which he can gank middle again, bottom or top, anywhere. So yeah, try to, be, try to uh, align your movements to go towards the mid lane by the rune timer. Courier has been killed. Vanished. There is no hope gone. for Radiant's middle tower. The Radiant Glyph is now active. Radiant's bottom tower is in danger. Only what you are. Don't be afraid to use remnants, remnants more. If you're not sure you can get the last hit under tower, just, just remnant it. To avoid these kind of awkward situations where the creeps are left with 10 health. Radiance top tower is in danger. Where's the party? <laughs> Let's talk about this moment. Radiant should look to their top. Under normal circumstances, should you be able to kill him? In any scenario, the answer is almost always no, because if he senses danger, he will just press R and get out. So by default, if a hero has an escape, you should not attempt to kill him. In this particular scenario, it almost worked out, but only because he himself would not assume that he can kill you. I mean, he does, he does assume that he can kill you, while at the same time, if we, if we reverse the roles, can avoid kill you? No, because you can zip out. So what happens is you're, you're both making incorrect moves because neither of you should be able to kill each other. But you both decide to just uh, kind of make a duel here. And what I'm saying is, in different matches, the player might not decide to make a duel here. And what ends up is you end up wasting all of your mana for a kill that shouldn't happen. And, and, and even worse, if someone might rotate, if you look at the minimap right now, we cannot see half the heroes. Vibrant could be here, Enigma could, he could be here, any one of them would just press a spell on you and you die. Because if you do well, you will be low on resources. So my point is to, unless you can make sure you can kill the hero in a, in a very fast amount of time, which is in the case here, do not engage at all. Tower. You, you're both kind of making incorrect decisions. Yes, it might have worked out almost, but it's again, it's super high risk, the party? though there's a very low chance of succe succeeding. Elemental. 
to gold. And what ends up happening Where's the is you had full health, full mana, and you feel forced to go base. And that's a lot of downtime. Same with Void. Where's the pod? Yeah. Ah. So now that you're in base, again you have the choice of selecting where you want to go. Let's look at the top. Again, do you need to be there? I think the answer is still the same. If they want to dive, they can dive, they can get a kill on TA, she's very low. And they should get a tower. I'm not even sure why the tower is still standing, they have the advantage. Well, bottom point is that you shouldn't go top. For the same reasons it previously is that they can get a kill, they can get a tower down. Should you go middle? Middle is looking pretty good because by the time you get there, you clear, you clear the creep wave, you clear the small camp, the rune is spawning, you're denying void the rune. And should you go bottom? I would say bottom is in pretty good slot state. Jugger has a support behind him. They cannot kill him. And Jugger is farming. So yeah, your best lane right now, I would say middle. And those two, there's not much. There, there's not much that you can't contribute. If you take this tower, Jugger is still farming. Nothing new opens. If you take this tower, you kick TA out of the lane. But you should only do so if they are unable to take the tower by themselves. And, I, and I'm pretty sure they can. At least they should be able to under normal circumstances. So yeah. You should maintain control of the middle, maybe get a ward here, get a ward here, see some side lanes. If someone comes and stays low health, you can snipe them. And you still control the ruins. Here I am. Should look to their top tower. And that's just a giant waste of mana. They had all this. The enemy team has all this time to rotate. Don't die because we have no mana. So yeah, this game so far is just uh, which team makes less mistakes. And I think I've outlined most of them. If you can yourself recognize them and avoid them, you, then you'll just climb so fast because they are making all these mistakes and you're not. See, that's what I'm talking about. There's, there's a fight happening with which you could help, but you have no mana to do so. Because of your little maneuver in the top. As a storm, especially, you should always have mana. Unless there was a big fight which actually forced you to spend your mana to survive or to get a crucial kill. Which top was not one of those cases. Then you should always stay at above 50% mana at least. Ideally more. Double kill. And now your team gets wiped out because you were unable to join them because of the top thing. Radiant's top tower is under attack. I think this would be enough information for you to digest for this session. We could look over the mid-game movements, the late-game movements, My path leads to but riches. the majority of your errors, of the things you can improve to gain MMR, is located into the first 15 minutes. The laning, the early game rotations, and I'm sure if you find we'll spend one more hour Talking about mid game, talking about late game. 
like that, but he just couldn't throw me a So I think we'll leave it at, at the laning phase in the early game. And if you want, we can look over the different sections at a later date. If you feel like it. But yeah, for now, your homework is exactly to move the laning phase and their decision making. Okay, so grab me on Discord if you have any questions or, or need clarifications about all that has been said here. And I'm gonna end the replay here. Stupendous!